All right, welcome everybody. In this video, uh, what we're gonna take a look at is a basic program that I created to help with uh, shellcode testing and debugging, mainly to debug shellcode, but also just to get it to execute. Um, I use this for a variety of reasons, um, a lot of malware analysis, and, and this is also part of a Basics of Exploitation series. And so if you haven't checked out the series, I'll add some links here in the video. Also, while we're at it, um, if you could please hit that subscribe button. Um, that really helps to uh, understand how the channel's growing. And don't forget, comments are always open. And I try to respond to those as timely as I can, although I will admit I do get a little behind sometimes. So uh, please hit that subscribe button. So with that, um, there's a number of reasons, motivations behind this program. Uh, you can see that I've got it set up here on my GitHub. So you can check it out here. Also add a link in the video. And I have, of course, all of the source that's available through the C program. It is a C program and then a release binary. And the idea with it, um, it's, a, it's a script that I started using very early on in my malware analysis and that I was running into you know, malware that was oftentimes using shellcode as part of its deobfuscation or unpacking, or even just as part of its, its core functionality. And so I wanted something that I could use in order to, to drop that shell code from memory and then debug it, step through it with a debugger. Uh, of course, in the context of exploitation, uh, this is also helpful to either generate shell code um, through tools like we've done in our last video using MSF Venom, if you haven't watched it, uh, but then also um, being able to, to run the shell code to make sure that it actually works before we try using it in the context of exploiting a program. So we'll go through the usage here, I'll try to keep this video short. It's going to be relatively straightforward. Uh, just a couple different arguments here that you'll be able to explore. Uh, as for the code itself, probably could be written a little more elegantly, but uh, hopefully it's in the ballpark. It certainly works, but um, of course, if there are bugs or feature requests, the you know that part of this GitHub repo is open. Um, I also use it as an opportunity, you know, why, why create another shell code program? There are uh, plenty of them out there. Uh, for me personally, it, it just helps because it allows me then to spend some time, more time writing C, something that uh, not being, you know, or have a, an extensive history of C development. I look at a lot of C through IDA and through reversing, but I don't author a lot of C and C++. It just gives me an opportunity uh, to go through and, and write some code and, um, and just, I guess, more practice than anything. Uh, but also, hopefully, it serves a purpose here, uh, as you'll see. Okay, so to get started, we can use the dash H argument to get some usage information. Uh, dash F will provide a path to the file. So we'll, there are two ways in which you can get this utility to load shellcode. I think probably gonna, that's gonna be the most helpful is just to use the dash F argument and provide a file. That'll take the file and load all of the content treated as shellcode, get it into memory. Um, if you look at the source of the program, there's also a way to define an internal array so if you're getting your shell code and it's already in the format of, of a C-style array, it's pretty easy to copy paste that in. And then what you can do is you'll have to recompile the program and then execute it and it'll execute the shell code via that array. So it's up to you. We're gonna use the file argument here, load our shell code from a file. Uh, the last two arguments then are designed for um, debugging. And the first one will be to insert a breakpoint before the shell code. So that will you know, insert a hex CC so that will insert a hex CC byte in int three, right? Well, right before the shell code. So that way, if you're when you're running the shell code under a debugger, it'll automatically break. You don't have to try to calculate the address and set a breakpoint yourself. And in the situations where your shell code doesn't begin at the beginning of the binary blob, maybe the entry point into the shell code is some offset. Um, the dash O argument allows you to define that. So that's the offset in bytes, um, which then you can either jump to that location. And if you, def if you provide the dash PP argument, that'll also set a breakpoint there. So, so you can use this independently if the entry point in your shell code is just simply an offset. You can use it in conjunction with BP because then that'll take at that offset and add, adjust the shell code to add an int three so that it'll break at that entry point. Um, or you can just define the breakpoint without the offset. And that will then assume that the entry point is the beginning of the shell code blob and it'll insert a breakpoint there. Okay, so how does this look? Well, uh, dash F, uh, I used equal signs to delineate the, the, you know, the argument key and the value. So do, you do need to keep those. Um, SC.bin, so this will be a relative path to the file that contains your shell code. Again, if you're following along from the last video, we generated SC.bin using MSF Venom. So if you're not sure how to do that or where to get shell code, 
uh, I would refer you back to that previous video. And now, since we're not defining either the dash BP or the dash O arguments, this will just load up the shell code and run it. And the shell code that we generated here is designed to just pop calc, run Windows exec and pop calc. So hopefully what we see, a little bit of out, output here, just giving you some status about your shell code. And as you can see, calculator did pop. So this tells us that our shell code did in fact work. So the shell code we generated worked as advertised. Okay, now not all shell code is going to be as glamorous as popping calc. And so what if we want to debug it, right? And and then this, and I guess one other use case that I didn't mention. Um, so I, you know, if I'm if you're writing your own shell code, you're definitely gonna spend a lot of time in a debugger. This can help with that. Um, if you're just getting shell code that you need to analyze from malware or from an exploit, this can help with that as well. Um, so we'll use WinDebug. I'll show you here. I already had it open. If we go to file, I'm going to use the launch executable advanced, and I'm not worried about time travel debug in this case. What I do want to define though is the file, because again, I want to load the shell code from the file. It's not coming from that internal array. And I'm just going to define a breakpoint using the dash BP argument. In this case, there is no need for an equal or a value. Um, now what this will do, because this shell code that was generated, the entry point is the beginning of the shell code. So what this will do, let's we'll start our debug session, is it will load the shell code into memory. Now typical when debug is to break when our program is loaded, right? So we have the shell code launcher, which is a normal PE file. This has got loaded into memory. Now we have a chance to break and we don't have to do that because I use the dash BP argument. So if we just type in G, for go or if you would have selected the go icon up above what will happen is we hit that int 3 that was inserted before the beginning of our shell code so it just shifted the shell code one byte to insert that breakpoint so you can see we're at address f90000 didn't define which address we should or preferred in memory it don't really need to i suppose that could be something that i could adjust the program to do uh, but because I automatically insert that breakpoint, then, you know, that address can just be whatever virtual alloc, whatever the memory allocation routine provides us, and we'll hit that breakpoint, right? And so here again is just some information uh, just showing you that it, okay, we are going to insert the breakpoint. That's the dash BP loaded it from this file. How much, how many bytes it found from our file of shellcode, memory allocation, copying routine, and then executions beginning. Okay, now at this point, had you provided the dash BP argument and you were not running it under a debugger, this in three would have caused an interrupt and it would have caused the program to essentially crash. So here we go, we're in the debugger, we can catch that. Now we can step through the code as if we were stepping through any code, but here I'm just gonna hit go and what we should see is that our calc will pop and our program will eventually terminate. All right, because then the shell code just ran as it was supposed to. So in the case where maybe you're you're testing shellcode and it's it's causing issues, now you could try to debug it, you know, identify or isolate that location where you're running into problems and figure out what the problem is. In this case, for this series, I wanted to have shellcode to pop calc to use in our in our toy program. And this is just allowing me to ensure that the shellcode works before I try to exploit the program. Okay, so again, you can find the program it's on my GitHub. A, I'm not the most clever at creating names, and I guess I didn't even try to consult with ChatGPT or Bard. Um, so I just called it SC Launcher for Shellcode Launcher, and uh, it's available. Please, uh, any bug reports, pull requests, issues, um, feel free to report those. Um, all right, in our next video then, what we'll do is we'll get into using this shellcode in our exploitable program. So hope to see you then.